Hey, Lucy fans, I'm Steph with Creation, and welcome back to our virtual weekend featuring the cast of Lucifer. I just wanted to remind you that the top tipper wins a five minute one on one video meet and greet with Tom right after this panel. So make sure your top supporter information is updated with your current email address. If you'd like to tip, click the green tip button on the bottom left hand corner of your stage screen. And Remember, a tipping is done as soon as Tom leaves the screen after his panel's done. So any tips made after that will not be counted towards the total. All right, and last but not least, the moment we've all been waiting for, the man who had us at desire. Please welcome Tom Ellis. Hello, everyone. Hello, how are we all? Although I'm, I'm, I'm saying this, expecting an answer from people, and I know that I'm just going to get questions to the right hand side of me, but I'm assuming that you're all saying hello, Tom back and happy Sunday, Tom, and things like that. Hello, everyone. Right. Let's start with some, um, some questions and then just keep going, shall we? We've got 45 minutes and um, I've just, I've, I've got a little bit of a hoarse voice because we've been doing a lot of shooting a lot of shouting during shooting this last week. And um, I've got my favorite mug with me. It's got all my favorite Lucy quotes on it. There we go. And um, it's got a hot toddy inside of it. So this should be rather lovely. Right, first question. Anna Casale. Hi, Tom. I'm Anna from Italy. If you could give yourself a piece of advice when you were 20, <laughs> what would you say and why? If I could give myself a bit of advice when I was 20, um, I'd say you are right to believe in yourself. Um, because between the age of 20 and 30, I think lots of things happened like in my, in my life and in my career that sort of knocked the confidence out of me a little bit. Um, but yeah, believe in yourself. And uh, don't worry, everyone, I turned the corner with that. But um, it's all good. Anyway, does that, does that answer your question, Anna Casale? Uh, Katie Lag, Hi, Tom. As a big sports fan, I'm curious about what fun rivalries exist among the cast. I love from Katie. Um, sporting rivalries. Well, we, we've got... Um, We've got a lot of Dallas Cowboy fans. Uh, we've got DB and Kevin are both Dallas Cowboy fans. Uh, and then we had a few Green Bay fans, uh, both Chris and Shawnee on our crew. Um, so there was a bit of banter flying around with those guys all the time. Um, and um, every now and again, myself and Leslie Ann Brandt's husband, Chris Payne Gilbert, will uh, we'll have a little uh, banter with each other because he's a big Manchester United fan and I'm not, I like Arsenal. Um, Anyway, does that answer your question, uh, Katie Lag? So, Evelyn Maselli. Hey, Tom, what was the hardest thing to record with Lauren? Um, gosh, I mean, I th Lauren and I are like brother and sister. So any, I think the first time that we ever had to properly like kiss and stuff was like, yeah, it's it's kind of it's it's kind of like kissing your sister. But um, so that was a bit weird, and we laughed about it, but. Um, we do enjoy working together. We have we have a lot of fun. She's been a great scene partner for, for six years. Uh, Imbog MZ. Hi, Tom. Yeah, so this is your screen name. Imbog um, Uh Hi, Tom. I'm Gabriella from Brazil. Hi, Brazil. And I'd like to know what Lucifer character would you like to spend a day with? Love you so much. Oh, love you too. Uh, what Lucifer character would you like to spend a day with? Ooh. Let me think about this. Um, probably a Menadil, because he could just fly me around places. Um, and um, I just really enjoy hanging out with TV. There you go. Um, do, 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 do. <laughs> oh, I like this question. This is Con Congl. Is your, uh, okay, Congl. C O N N G L. This is your question. If Lucifer had to work at a normal nine to five job, what would you do? Gloria from Denver. See, so, yeah, Gloria from Denver. If Lucifer had to work a normal nine to five, um, I don't think he'd ever want to do that. But if he did, it'd be quite amusing. If he'd like, I don't know, if he did the, like the checkouts at the at the grocery store or something like that. 
just be a quite an amusing situation to have them in there. So would you like would you like um, paper or, or plastic with with the with the shopping? Yeah. Um, Krista Dutton. Hey Tom, what's number one on your bucket list? What do you imagine? Sorry, it was a fly. What do you imagine Lucifer's to be? So what's number one on my bucket list? I mean, back in the day, I would have said something like a bungee jump or something, but definitely not now. Uh, number one on my bucket list at the moment is to get vaccinated. Um, <laughs> and then uh, what's number one on Lucifer's bucket list? Oh, goodness me. Where do we start? Um, number one on Lucifer's bucket list. I think I think number one on Lucifer's bucket list would be to actually get drunk because we always played him that he just can't quite get drunk because he's got this kind of like celestial kind of sobriety that's stopping him but even though he gives it a good go so um there we go that's on his bucket list to actually properly get drunk one day uh syro hi tom i'm silka from germany hello hi germany love germany and i would like to know if you plan to continue on the musical track of your career um <clears throat> i don't know i mean i i certainly would like to um carry on singing you know um i don't know whether i'm going to release music but i certainly just enjoy doing it um and certainly we'll do it you know live and stuff uh when i have the opportunity with people that would appreciate it um uh but uh, you know certainly like doing music on the show has made me realize that i'd like to like carry on singing and and do that in my professional career as well in terms of acting so um should the opportunity come up to do a musical or something like that yeah then yes i would love to do that if it's the right one um but yes watch this space okay so who's next sabelle amida da, da, da. okay sabelle amida hello from brazil hello brazil again what was it like to have God in the plot of the second part of season five? And what was it like for you to work with Dennis? Oh, Dennis. Um, I absolutely adored working with Dennis Haysbert. Um, We've become really good friends since then. We play a lot of golf together. Um, he, I mean, I was just so, uh, I, I was not sure if we'd ever meet dad in our, in our show. Um, but when, you know, when the storyline came up and they cast Dennis, I was absolutely delighted. Um, just because I've loved him as an actor for years and years and years. Um, and he didn't disappoint just as a, as a man. He's just a wonderful human being. Um, and as an actor, he just brought so much to the part. I mean, he's got so much unbelievable gravity. Um, and, and empathy and, and he's got, he's got everything. Um, and some of my favorite scenes that we've ever shot on Lucifer are in this run of episodes and they are with Dennis and uh, yeah I hope you guys enjoy them because I I just think that um he was a real gift to the show there we go uh Sasha Koeva I always wondered who was your favorite Doctor Who when you were a kid oh gosh I mean trying to think about this now i mean i really like peter davidson back in the day <laughs> which was the like the, the original like doctor who sort of franchise back back way back in the day um yeah peter davidson i think was probably my uh my favorite doctor who which is weird because i ended up working with him years later on, on miranda and um yeah i and i think it's just that you know at the age i was as a boy and and stuff and what i understood of the show when i was watching it i think that's the one that sticks with me anyway but they're all marvellous. And I thought David Tennant um, was just incredible. Just going to put it out there. Um, da, da, da. Pat. Hi, Tom. Pat underscore. Hi, Tom. What's your favourite therapy session with Dr. Linda in all seasons, not including season five being sex yet? Pat from the Philippines. Hi, Pat from the Philippines. Hello, Philippines. Favourite Dr. Linda scene? Um, I think it's probably... It's probably in uh, season one, and it's probably in, uh, I think, episode five now. I can't remember what the episode is called now, but it's the episode where Lucifer's wings are stolen. And it's the first time um, 
in you know since we've known Lucifer because you know his uh, this is season one. Um, it's the first time we've ever really seen him care about anything, apart from obviously the detective, but that's a different kind of thing. But something that really means something to him, um, and something deeply personal to him. Um, and you know, it, it brings out a darkness in Lucifer that we haven't seen before, and uh, his kind of recollection of, of what it was to to run hell and how that sort of left him and scarred him um sort of came out in that episode and and i i thought oh this is i'm really glad that we're that we're going there with this character and we're mining that territory because um i think you know it's it's helped us get to where we are now with lucifer he's been on not only a, a journey of a great character but i'd like to think he's been on a big emotional journey as well in his development okay Oh, L-O-V-E-S, uh, Lucifer. So that's all one word, L-O-V-E-S, Lucifer. Hi, Tom. I'm Eliana. Hi, Eliana. Are there any props from set that you plan on keeping? <clears throat> um, ooh, let me think about this. I mean, I'd love, obviously, one of Lucifer's pianos, but I, I don't think I'd get away with sneaking that out. Um... I mean, there's lots and lots of like things in the penthouse that I wonder whether that, you know, I just wonder if one thing wasn't there when they were cleaning up at the end of Lucifer, if they'd actually miss it. Um, so I might get myself a little thing, but I have to say there is there is an addition to the penthouse this year, which is a golf trophy um, that was won by me, <laughs> uh, playing against some of the other crew and, and Dennis Haysworth actually. Um, and it's got pride of place in, uh, in Lucifer's penthouse now. There we go, little spoiler for you. Uh, da, da, da. Alexei underscore hi. Hi, I'm Alexa from Hungary. Hi, Hungary. I love Hungary. I've got family in Hungary. And Hedvig, my makeup artist on Lucifer, is Hungarian and she's awesome. Um, were there any surprises about Lucifer's character that you did not expect from him? Love you. Love you too. Um, let me think about this. Any surprises about his character that, I mean, I think that, you know, when we got the pilot, the pilot version of Lucifer, which is the only thing I had to go on at that point, you know, I guess I wouldn't have assumed that, um, that we would have done scenes that I just talked about actually. Um, and, you know, really kind of like pulling the layers of this character away um because you know on the surface a very very fun character and it would have been tempting just to kind of like do that all the time without any kind of real development but um i think you know the the, the development of of lucifer is the is the nice surprise and finding it finding what's underneath him is a nice surprise and a nice kind of like challenge for me as well um so yeah does that answer your question hopefully Hiba, hi Tom, how are you? I'm Hiba. What is your dream destination? The country you would like to visit the most? Lots of love from Morocco. Ah, oh, I love Morocco. I do love Morocco. Um, I've worked there and I've been on holiday there. It's a marvellous, marvellous country. Hello, Morocco. Um, dream destination. Well, I mean, I've always wanted to go to Fiji. I've always had a fascination with Fiji. Um, and um, I hope to go there one day. Um, oh gosh, I mean, the world is just full of dream destinations, really. But um, I've been to the Maldives a couple of times in my life. I've been very lucky to do that. And that is also a, a dreamy, dreamy destination. Um, but yeah, I think uh, Fiji one day. I'll see you there. Okay. Uh, hey, Tom, my name's Jordan. My question is, and Jordan, your screen name is XJH11X. Hey, Tom, my name's Jordan. My question is, since Lucifer is always asking others' desires, what is it you truly desire? Love from the UK. Well, Jordan, uh, right now, I truly, truly desire some normality. And I truly, truly desire seeing my friends and getting drunk in a pub and hugging and kind of just seeing people and like being normal and not thinking about things passing from one person to another 
Um, that, that's what I truly desire right now. Um, and it's going to happen, by the way, people. It is going to happen. So please stay positive. Please stay safe. Please get vaccinated whenever you get an opportunity. Um, and we will turn this huge, horrible COVID boat around. Right. Uh, Catherine S9. Hi, from the UK, Tom. Was it difficult getting into character as Michael, who was impersonating Lucifer? Love who. So Michael impersonating Lucifer was weird. Yes, getting into character as Michael in the first instance was weird because I I, I really enjoyed it, but at the same time, I, I hadn't felt that way on this set for a long time. In that I was this was new territory for me as a you know in, as a character, and so I didn't have the same comfort level that I have. As, as Lucifer, because I played Lucifer for such a long time, it's just, that's like flicking a switch now almost. Um, and Michael wasn't, so I really had to think about that. And so that, that was the challenge. And it was it was a weird experience doing it in front of people that I knew so well, and knew me playing Lucifer so well. Um, I had to sort of get through the initial kind of feelings of, oh God, I feel like a massive fraud, um, and really trust in the choices that I'd made and just go for it. Um, so yeah, it was a bit of a challenge, but ultimately, one one that I uh, I relished, <laughs> one that I don't think I'll rush too quickly to do again. By the way, people. <laughs> okay. Da, da, da. Oh, des desires Lux. Hey Tom, would you ever record for the Calm app? Well, I mean. If they came and asked me to record for the car map, I would, of course, take that into huge consideration. And I would take my time in responding to the people at the car app. Okay. Uh, see, this is what happens when you, when you don't interact with people, you just answer questions. What happens to me is I go a little bit bonkers. So just bear with me. Um, Leslie, 1981, 10. Hi, Tom. I'm Maria from Brazil. Hello again, Brazil. Uh, do you have a preference on shooting between emotional scenes and fight scenes? I love you so much. I love you too. I love you, Brazil. You are like, uh, Brazil, you are amazing. And I know you're having a really tough time at the moment in Brazil. So just hang in there, guys. Um, and... Thank you so much for the outpouring of love that you consistently bring us. And we are hopefully going to come and see you one day. Um, do I have a preference between emotional scenes and fight scenes? Um, no, I mean, I, my preference is to do really good scenes. And so if it's a really good emotional scene, I'm like, yes. If it's a really good fight scene, I'm like, yes. Um, that's, that's, all, that's, that's my preference. Um, and I think, you know, we always sort of take our time on this right up until the last minute to sort of distill the process and, and hope that we're sort of making the best of everything. Um, so, yeah, I, all of the scenes. And, and again, like, I feel very, very blessed with the multi sort of faceted aspect of Lucifer and the fact that I get to do emotional scenes and fight scenes and music and all those different things. I'm very, been a very lucky boy for six years. Thank you, people, for watching. Um, Catherine underscore Maguire. Hi, Tom. I'm Catherine from North Carolina. Hello, North Carolina. I have family in South Carolina. But hello, North Carolina. I love all the Carolinas. And I've got a friend in France called Carolina. I don't know if you're here today, but yeah. Well, Caroline, but you know. Um, I'm Catherine. If Lisa could have a pet, what would it be? And you've got a crying, laughing emoji. So I think you want me to say something funny. Uh, or is it just the notion of Lucifer having a pet that you find funny? Um, let's let's think about this. If Lucifer can have a pet, I think. Well, I mean, look, I have always wanted to have a Great Dane since I was a kid. No one in in my life ever thinks that's a good idea. Um, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna kind of put that forward. I think Lucifer should get a Great Dane. Um, and then call it Dan. Ah, <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, um, 
No, you should, you should have a Great Dane and call, call the Great Dane something heroic and then have a Chihuahua and call it Dan. Um, okay. Uh, do you feel like... Hi, this is Vev. Hi, Tom. I'm Verena. Hi, Verena. Do you feel like you yourself took some of Lucifer's character traits? Well, I think... I think he's more the other way around, to be honest. Um... Do I think I've got any of Lucifer's character traits? Hmm. I mean, God, let me think about this. I hope not. Um, <laughs> uh, let me think about this. Do I have any? I don't know if I do have any of these character traits, but it, it, like I say, it's more the other way. I kind of like in infected Lucifer with lots of my character traits. Um, but I, I tell you what does happen, if this helps you at all, is that my children get really, really annoyed at me when I talk in Lucifer's voice, because Lucifer's voice is different to my regular Tom voice. Um, and, uh, you know, if I've been working or if I, you know, I've just come off set or if they come and visit me on set, I, you know, my voice is very much Lucifer's voice most of the time, or, you know, just, and Nat's hair from being away from Lucifer's voice quite heightened. So, um, yeah, that's that's basically what happens. And it really annoys my family. And they go, Dad, Dad, just stop. Just stop. Just, talk, just stop talking in that ridiculous voice. Genuine words from my youngest house. Um, Giovanni Oliveira. Oh, gosh, Giovanna Oliveira. Hi, Tom. My name is Giovanna. I love it. How do you make the difference between Michael's and Lucifer's eyes? I love you. Kisses from Brazil again. Gosh, Brazil. Smatterings of kisses all the time. Thank you. Um, how do you make the difference between Michael's and Lucifer's eyes? I, 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 do you know what, Giovanna Oliveira? Um, I just don't think about it. Do you know what? I don't think about it. I just do it. Is that weird? I don't, and, and maybe this, uh, uh, like, I don't like, for example, I don't watch the monitors back when we shoot. I never watch stuff when we're shooting ever, um, unless it's from a pu for a purely technical reason for a stunt or something. Um, but no, I never, I, I just can't do it because I just, I don't want to think about like, why would I make, I don't want to have conscious choices in my head. It, is that weird? Anyway. No one's answering me, so it doesn't matter. Um, Shelby Liz. Hi, Tom. My name is Shelby, and I'm from Minnesota. Yeah, I love Minnesota. For Lucifer's cell phone, what pics do you think he would have on his lock screen and background himself? Now, he'd, he'd have, um, in earlier seasons, he'd have himself. And I think now he'd probably have Chloe um, or the detective. Uh uh... Oh, this is a good question. I like this. Okay. Underscore Dasher. Hi, from Belarus. Hi, Belarus. Gosh, you're up late. You're up really late. Thank you for staying up. If you could cast yourself in one legendary movie, what movie would it be? And in which role? Send love. Love Belarus. I love Belarus. That's a cracking question. Um... Oh, oh, it's a great question. Hmm. I mean, I think probably, considering the sort of kind of cultural impact it ha has had, you know, if if imagine being like in the original Star Wars movies. I mean, that's probably, you know, I would have been if I'd have been Han Solo in the original Star Wars movies. I mean. That would have been great. Although I, it would have been ridiculous because I was literally a newborn baby. So that would have looked, I, I wouldn't have been able to hold nothing. I wouldn't be able to fly the Millennium Falcon. So anyway, um, Emma98641. Hi, Tom. I'm Emma from the Netherlands. Woo! Hello, my Dutch friends. Love you all. Um, is there anything you can tell us about your upcoming projects? Love you so much. Love you too, Emma. Um, 
your upcoming projects. Yes. So I, um, as a few of you might have seen the other day, that there was an announcement that I'm doing a movie for Netflix, which I'm very excited about. Um, and that is a movie called Players. And it's starring the lovely Gina Rodriguez, uh, who is best known for playing, uh, for the lead role in Jane the Virgin, for playing Jane. Um, and uh, I'm very, very excited about working with her. I've heard wonderful things about her. And um, it's, a, it's a really fun rom-com. Uh, we have Damon Wayans Jr. as well from New Girl. A lot of people don't know who Damon Wayans Jr. is. Um, and yeah, basically uh, it's, it's filming this summer in Vancouver and I'm hoping it'll be out sometime next year. So there you go. Um, Who's next? V Gold nine one zero four. Hi Tom. What is something you'd like to pass on to your kids? Oof. Um. They've got them already, but I think that one thing that I kind of like really was insistent, and I've always been insistent that my kids have is good manners, because I think they go a long way. Um. And I can't bear it when people have bad manners. Um, anyway, there you go. Uh, <laughs> um, but they are, my kids are exceptionally well mannered. In fact, my, my kids pick me up on my manners sometimes, or certainly on my language. Um, Anchor784, hi Tom, what motivates you and how do you motivate yourself? Love from Germany. Hello again, Germany. Um, what motivates me? um fear <laughs> that motivates me um the knowledge that i actually have to do something um that's uncomfortable or whatever then that motivates me to do something um i um when i got uh when i got into shape a couple of years ago to kind of like actively try and change my shape slightly and and, and put on some muscle and stuff um the thing that motivated me then was a man called Paolo from Italy, who still motivates me to this day. Um, but he's like an awesome friend and trainer. Um, and it's just uh, really, really good at helping me stay on track, um, basically. Um, and the other thing that motivates me, I would suggest uh, at the moment is my children. They motivate me a lot. They motivate a lot of my choices. They motivated a lot of my feelings about um being a bit more responsible as a person um and looking after myself a bit more they motivated my choice to give up smoking which i've done well uh september the 21st so i've not smoked a cigarette since september the 21st um and i don't think i'd ever be saying that to people and i'm saying it now very happily as a non-smoker and my children motivated me to do that so there you go um Larissa402. Hey, Tom. Larissa from Romania. Hi, Romania. Um, what do you think Lucifer would do in quarantine? Break it is what Lucifer would do. Um, he would break quarantine. And that's not a suggestion. Don't ever break quarantine. But I'm just telling you what Lucifer would do. Okay. Um, Abin, Abin Kira. Hi, Tom. My name is Thea. If there was someone you could do more scenes with, who would you choose and why? Love you. Lots of free three threes. Um, someone I could do more scenes with and why? I, I guess you're probably thinking like in, in the Lucifer cast. And I, um, I absolutely adore Mr. Kevin Alejandro. As an actor, as a friend, as a director, um, he is uh, phenomenal. And... Um, I wish that, um, I mean, I loved what we did with Dan and Lucifer. I, you know, I don't think that, would, you know, it would have been that way had it not been Kevin doing it. And I just, um, I just, yeah, he's just a great person to work with. And Kevin is a phenomenally talented actor uh, and um, just, just great fun to work with. And I love, you know, I, I, I wish we could do more scenes together all the time. We always say that when we're working together. Right, uh, Veronique 27070. Hi Tom, I'm Veronique from Belgium. I think I might know who you are, Veronique. 
I think you've got nice wallpaper, if I remember rightly. What added responsibilities did you get becoming an executive producer on the show as well? Um, I added responsibility. Well, I, you know, I think um, it was it was nice to officially be able to get involved in conversations that I was already getting involved in, but I <laughs> kind of inserted myself in um, that maybe I wasn't meant to be involved in. I don't know. I mean, I the, the it's an interesting show. This one in that like. Um, myself and and Joe and Ildi, who are the showrunners, um, were not like the originators of this show. This was never our idea in the first place. So we've kind of had this thing that we've worked with all together from the beginning, um, since the pilot. Um, and uh, I think that you know uh, along the way, you know that they've obviously been running the show and been the bosses and stuff. But I've um, I've been the man on the ground a lot of the time, dealing with things um, on the set and. You know uh, the transition between um, writers' room and, and actual like filming. Um, there are sometimes creases that need ironing out and stuff. And I think that um, certainly in the last couple of seasons, I've been able to sort of facilitate that officially um, as EP. So that's been nice. Um, um, but yeah, just I, I, I was really really delighted that um, that they made me a, a producer on the show. Um, and I think that they were acknowledging a lot of the stuff that I do away from just playing the part of Lucifer on it. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Uh, he 11 cats. Hi, Tom. Cat from Australia. Australia? What time is it there? I mean, actually, it's probably, you're probably, actually, you're probably all, I'm doing all right thinking about it. Anyway, um, how are you, Australia? I love Australia. Love it. What was your favorite part of being Michael? My favorite part of being Michael. My favorite part of being Michael was the crew and their reaction to me as Michael uh, was really quite fun because they this this things that I started hashtag Michael's a dick was what people kept coming up to me and saying when we were shooting it because they didn't like Michael and what he was doing to Chloe and Lucifer. Um, so that was my favorite part about me, Michael. P people coming up to me and going, I don't like Michael. Michael's a dick. Um, job done. Uh, and least favorite part of playing Lucifer. Love you so much. Least favorite part of playing Lucifer. I wouldn't say it's my least favorite part, but one thing, one thing I do say a lot is, my goodness me, the next part I'm going to play is um, someone who doesn't talk very much because Lucifer really does like the sound of his own voice and loves talking um, and never shuts up. And um, so that's meant realistically for me as Tom that I've had to do a lot of line learning in the last six years. And um, yeah, uh, it's it's been fun though. I do enjoy him. Uh, sorry, my daughter just texted me, one second. <laughs> Sorry, guys. One second. Okay. Um, uh, 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 Kyara. Hi, Tom. Kyara from Oz here. How do you think Lucifer acquired all of his money? Um, just made it. I mean, you know, he can get anything he wants, really. Get desires out of people. Just go to the richest man in the world. I don't know, really. But he's just, it's just money. I mean, that's how Lucifer feels about it, so... Um, I don't think he robbed anybody, though. Uh, oh, Della93. Hello there. I'm Della from Vancouver. Yay! Love Vancouver. We shot the first two seasons of Lucifer in Vancouver, and I'm coming back to see you this summer. Um, if your life was a movie, what songs would be on the soundtrack? <sighs> oh, I like that question. If my life was a movie, what songs would be on the soundtrack? Um, Bohemian Rhapsody. Um, I'm Gonna Make It All Right by Paul Pena. Um, oh Happy Day from Sister Act 2, Back in the Habit. Um, Amazing Grace. Uh, the entirety of Rage Against the Machine album. 
uh, the first one from um, 92. Uh, smells like teen spirit. Oh, I say slide away. God, I mean, it goes on and on and on and on. But, uh, yeah, so many things. Anyway, oh, there'd definitely be some Nina Simone on there as well. Um, uh, so Della from Vancouver, there you go. That's, there's a starting of a soundtrack there. My challenge to you, Della from Vancouver, is to take the, the artists and the songs I've just said and start making a soundtrack on Spotify and share it with me. There you go. Uh, and I'm Tom LS17 on Spotify. Sanna Newold. Hey, Tom, I'm Sanna from the Netherlands. Hello, Netherlands again. And I wonder who in the show is most like their character and the least. Lots of love. Who's most like their character? Um, I guess in certain regards, Rachel would be for me because Rachel and I, we like to talk to each other and we talk, we're, we're really good friends and we, you know, we go there. Uh, we talk about deep personal things and we, you know, we talk about our lives and, um, and deep things and philosophical things. So I think that, that you know, I have a kind of like therapist offset with, with Rachel a little bit situation there. Who's least like their character? Um, uh, <laughs> I probably Lauren actually because she, I mean, Detective Decker most of the time is very serious, and um, anyone who knows Lauren German most of the time is not very serious, so probably that. Um, <laughs> Alicia, hi, I, I'm Alicia. If you could witness any event from the past, present, or future, <gasps> which would you choose? Oh, wow. That's a really good question. Um, God, what a great question. Uh, witness any event from the past, present or future, which would you choose? Gosh, I don't know. I, I'm stumped on that one. I mean, it, I think the temptation of the event of the future is that people would often think, how do I, how do I leave this place? But I don't want to know that. Um, any event from the past, present or future? Gosh, I mean, I can only imagine what the world felt like when the war finally came, the Second World War finally came to an end. Um, but I know that that came was a mixture of emotions, but I, it must have been quite a phenomenal thing. Um, so let's stick with that. Um, Kayla underscore Bellello. Hi, Tom. I'm Kayla from Florida. I'm a huge fan. Hi, Kayla. How are you doing? Have you ever personally benefited from lucid therapy sessions with Dr. Linda? Never personally from the therapy sessions with Linda, but like I just referred to in the question before, um, Rachel and I have like, I think we've helped each other out a few times along the years. Um, Brandy underscore Carter. Hi, Tom. Do you know what happens to Lisa's Corvette after the show is over? From Brandy in North Carolina. Well, Weirdly enough, Brandy, I asked that same question the other day because I believe I filmed the last scene that I'm going to film with the Corvette the other day. It was a sad event. Um, I believe uh, it will probably be held at Warner Brothers um, because Warner Brothers own the show. And um, I, you know, there is... There is a Warner Brothers studio tour that happens um, and as part of that Warner Brothers studio tour and the, the tour is obviously not happening at the moment, but I think there will be after um, COVID eases and restrictions ease that they'll get the tours back up and running. And I believe that there is a motor um, sort of uh, museum part of that tour where the Batmobile is and the, um, the mystery machine from Scooby-Doo, I believe, is there as well. And I wonder whether Lisbeth's Corvette might be there as well. Um, so we'll find out. But um, if there's a way to buy it, don't worry, I've put in first dibs because I want that car. Um, it is absolutely gorgeous, but it's a beast to drive, just FYI. Um, hi, Kaus. Hey, Tom, I'm Polly from Brazil. Hi, Brazil again. P 
Polly from Brazil. How would you <laughs> how would you react if you met the devil? You are the best. Love you. <laughs> um, I I think I'd be pretty scared um, because uh, you know that would mean a lot of things. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, I'd be pretty scared. I don't think that he would be like me. But then look, let's just. I'm just going to put it out there. I don't. I don't actually believe in the devil. I'm just going to put it out there. Okay. Um, but it, he's been a wonderful character to play for all these years. Um, Charlie, 97. Hi, Tom. I'm Charlie from England. Hello, Charlie from England. Charlie here. What scene, moment in your head was the moment Lucifer realised he fell for Chloe? I think, and I know actually, it's it's the scene in the pilot. It's the scene where she gets shot in the pilot. Um... And he says to, you know, he says her name for the first time. Key. Um, and uh, he runs over to her when she's been shot. And, you know, he cares about someone else for the first time. So I think that that is our moment. And then he says, my dad's going to have to wait you. My dad is going to have to wait for you a little longer. And then um, as she passes out, he goes and does nasty things to Jimmy Barnes. And then wakes up next to her in the hospital. And I think, you know, that's it there in a, in a nutshell. Um, Nadine underscore Cloutier. Hi, Tom. My name is Nadine from Canada. How was it to be directed by Kevin and DB? Thanks and continue your great work. Love you. Love you too. Love Canada. What a lovely, what a lovely group of people you Canadians are. Um, uh, it was, I mean, like, I, I, I've had a little meeting group before. Uh, and, and talked about this. Uh, let's talk about Kevin first. Kevin has done now, I'm directing the current episode. Um, it's his fourth episode, and he is turning out to be a absolutely phenomenal director. Um, and I uh, just have really loved working with him on all the episodes that we've done, and I've seen him grow as a director, and his confidence grow, and, um, and that's been amazing. So uh, that was great. DB, my, my brother, I was just so happy that we could um, give him the opportunity to do this because I know he's wanted to direct for such a long time. And he was awesome. I mean, it's not easy coming in and like doing, directing something for the first time and, you know, all of the things that come with that, the multiple plates that one has to spin in order to, to do that. And DB just took it in his stride and he was brilliant. And he, has to, he had to deal with like a lot of things like directors do. And he also had his directorial debut happening during COVID, which was exceptionally, you know, that's like doing a sword fight with your arm behind your back and you're fighting on because basically it's just mask, shield, all your communication is shut off and you know, all these challenges that he had to deal with it. And he just took it in his stride. He was amazing. Um, and I was just was so proud of him as a friend and as a colleague and um i can't wait to see it i can't wait to see his his cut and what, he, what he's done with it um because i know it's going to be a great episode so yeah there you go uh and this is the last question everybody wendy underscore michelle underscore boiter b-u-i-t-r hi tom i'm michelle what are you going to miss about lucifer you're an amazing actor. I love you. Greetings from Colombia. Hello, Colombia. Um, oh my gosh. I am going to miss everybody. That's what I'm going to miss. Like it's been the most unique experience for six years. And my cast, who I, you know, I like a little family. Um, and, uh, you know, our writers and our producers and all of that side of thing. But the crew that I see every day um, who really make this show possible, who really enable everything, are just the best group of people. And after this season and the COVID stuff that's been happening and the, the masks and the shields and the testing and everything that they have to go through and endure to make the show... Um, and they are like truly the unsung kind of heroes of it. I'm going to miss those people the most because they are a truly special group of individuals. 
Anyway, um, I'll speak to you guys later. Thanks for those questions. Sorry I'm a bit hoarse, um, but it's this bloody character. He never shuts up. Anyway, I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Tom, thank you so much for being here today. We really appreciate you taking the time to answer uh, your fan questions and to be with us. Um, we do have your one-on-ones coming up, and uh, we do have more virtual content coming up. But first, we're going to announce the winner of the one-on-one -on -one meet and greet, um, Leslie Ann Sindal. Leslie Ann Sindal, congratulations. You're the winner of our, the one-on-one -on -one five minute meet and greet with Tom that's happening right after this. So hang out in the chat just in case we have an issue getting you your link. And uh, for those of you, um, for the rest of you, we are coming back with more content. So make sure that you check your inbox and our social channels for announcements. If you're not on our email list, go ahead and sign up on our website, creationent.com. And also follow us on social at Creation ENT on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And, uh, and then at Creation Entertainment on TikTok. All right, you guys, this is Steph from Creation signing off. Thanks.